Yeah. It's Tuesday, so we're here to yap about the Week 10 waiver wire for fantasy football. Not exactly an exciting week by any stretch of the schizophrenic imagination, okay? But we're still here to do our job. We're here to finish the job. We're here to do our Antonio Pierce. We're here to fill in for you halfway through the season and dominate, all right? So we're going to hop over to Sleeper. We're going to look through the trending tab, all the guys that are trending throughout the fantasy football world, as well as look at some dudes that we can drop. Normally, I tell you to tuck the shirts in, but we came tucked. If you come tucked, you do not have to tuck. Understood? Let's see. As always, you can find our waiver wire rankings neatly nicely packaged and organized for you as well as fab suggestions for every single player on the waiver wire on bdge.co that's where you can sign up to be a big dog member you'll get our weekly rankings you'll get access to our private q and assault live stream on youtube every single saturday you can ask any six-star questions that you may have let's jump right in with uh probably the highest trending player of the week and that is mr keaton mitchell he was an undrafted free agent signs with baltimore um, out of college, he's explosive. He is explosive. He's undersized, a little bit, 5'8", 190. So you're talking about Devon Achan size, if not a little bit bigger, but he's got explosion like Achan, maybe a little bit slower, but it's nearly impossible to put the word slow attached to Keaton Mitchell because this dude ran a 4'3'7", and he shows it on the field, man. Nine carries, 138 yards, and a touchdown in their blowout win over Seattle. Now I know what you're thinking. It was a blowout win. A lot of it came in garbage time, but he was getting mixed in with the starters. Plenty of touches in the first half. Some of his production did come in the second half. But that is how these opportunities arise. When you get your chance, you pounce on it. All right? And Keaton Mitchell did it. He is shifty. He is explosive. He's a big-time playmaker in a backfield that is, you know what? I won't say they're inept at it because Gus Edwards really be shaking and moving and grooving a little bit this year. He He's making some big plays. He had an 80-yard catch. He had like a 45-yard catch. He's, he, he's moving out there a little bit. But realistically, they need some consistent explosiveness out of the backfield. And Keaton Mitchell is just a better version of Justice Hill, realistically. Justice Hill has like a 20-yard play once a week, but ends up averaging about three yards per carry. He feels dusty. He feels like we need to hire a cleaning service, get him out of Baltimore, okay? Now, John Harbaugh came out and said that this will be a committee going forward. That should not be a surprise to anyone. There's, there's a lot of moving parts here. I kind of look at Keaton Mitchell as a version of Jaleel McLaughlin. Like, you can clearly see by the eye test that he is uh, something special in the backfield, but it is going to be beholden to the game script. It is going to be beholden to the coach. I do think they're in a much better um, situation, obviously. Baltimore is, they're clicking right now. They're they are opening up pop-ups left and right. They're clicking, and that could lead to more scoring opportunities. Keaton Mitchell's not going to be the dude on the goal line ever. It's kind of like uh, if you put a good running back into, into Buffalo, it's like, ah, they're going to use Damian Harris. It's like James Cook a little bit, right? So it's a little bit of your risk tolerance. You could pick him up. I do think he's got a ton of upside going forward because – I don't think Baltimore's really ever been shy to use explosive running backs in the past. Like, doesn't necessarily matter their size, I don't think, in this type of offense when it's like run and gun and they are very high tempo and you have Lamar back there. So it's like I could see Keaton continuing to, one, just completely usurp Justice Hill as the dynamic back to Gus Edwards. But Gus Edwards has played well enough and he fits a perfect role in that offense to the point where Keaton will probably never get like more than 45 to 50% of the snaps in a given game. You can even see here, he had 18% of the snaps this week. And it's not a predictive week just because the score got so out of hand. But I think more often than not, you'll see Justice Hill, even if Justice Hill gets jumped by Keaton Mitchell, Hill will still be like a 20% snap guy. It'll probably be like 45% Gus, maybe 30% uh, Keaton and then floating between like 20 and 25 percent Justice Hill so if you want to bank on big plays he's a guy for you he could fill in during bye weeks and I think there's upside overall but I'm not gonna go crazy with Keaton Mitchell just based on the fact that there are a lot of moving parts here and everything kind of needs to fit in perfectly in order for things to really like break right for him I like him he is probably my top waiver wire pickup of the week I would throw anywhere from like 8 to 15 percent of my fab on him probably closer to the lower end although at this point also like a lot of times people probably confuse the percentages you throw with the actual dollar amounts you'll hear a lot of waiver wire videos that refer to fab and 8 to 15 percent is not the same thing as 8 to 15 dollars so keep that in mind when we're talking about 15 to 20 percent of your fab remaining you might only have like fifty dollars fab so try to keep that consciousness you know try to keep that energy of what we're saying here like all right ten percent of your fab 
maybe if you have $30 fab left, it's more than $3. So just like stay dialed in. Next up, you got Dobbs. He's extremely streamable uh, going forward in one quarterback leagues. Obviously, if he was dropped in super flex, you want to pounce on that. They have a great weapons group. He clearly can run the ball and he can do everything that a uh, decent QB could do. Noah Brown's only owning 4% of leagues, but since he's come back from his uh, IR stint, he has been extremely involved. Week 8, 3 for 57. This previous week, obviously, 6 for 153 and a touchdown. Everybody ate in the offense this week with CJ Stroud absolutely balling out. They signed him this offseason, and he was immediately playing over Tank Dell. That probably should not be the case, but if this team goes extremely pass-heavy, which we saw in Week 9, this is a team that could go somewhere in the 65 to 66, 67% uh, pass rate in neutral game script because of how well Stroud has adapted to the NFL. And that's the reason why you probably just want pieces of this offense right now. He's playing so well. He's so poised. He is throwing the ball with such fucking accuracy. And Noah Brown's getting very valuable targets. He's getting downfield targets. He's a clear part of this offense with their lack of success on the ground with Damian Pierce and Devin Singletary. Again, I think this could be a very, very pass heavy offense going forward. No, Brown, not like realistically, he's not like an ultra explosive playmaker. I don't expect him to make huge play. It's almost like um, it's almost like Josh Reynolds, where he's going to be a staple of this offense, and it's an offense that you trust enough to move the ball and present scoring opportunities. More often than not, you should probably expect like four for 50, but every once in a while, he's going to give you the five for 80 and a touchdown, so you could do worse with him. Let's just keep going down by position. So running backs, uh, Ty Chandler's an okay pickup now that Cam Akers ruptured his Achilles. I still think Alexander Madison is going to be the workhorse for all intents and purposes you know he he's probably a stash he's a he's an explosive playmaker but they clearly don't really love him out there in minnesota gibson's trash been trash really all we got at the running back position i think that's actually pick upable in your leagues i mean here's a list here's a here's a quick quick look i didn't put any of the fab suggestions in yet my rankings are not done but if i'm looking at my running back rankings for the week they give you like a standard list of players that you can rank, but most of them fall into this list. Like it's just it's just not exciting. And again, these rankings are not done. I'd probably throw like Charbonnet up here, et cetera. But Elijah Mitchell is the clear handcuff to C Mac. He was the only one that got touches in uh week eight before their bye. So Jordan Mason's kind of out of the picture. Charbonnet needs to be owned, Tajay Spears needs to be owned. But like other than that, it's kind of gross. Kenneth Gainwell scored a touchdown, but he's not really involved. I will say, though, if DeAndre Swift keeps fumbling the ball, maybe he carves out a bigger role because they do absolutely trust him out there in Philadelphia. But let's move to uh, the wide receiver position just as a whole because I think that's a little bit more exciting. Tank Dell, there ain't no fucking way that he's available in anyone's leagues. Khalil Shakir continues to be really involved in this offense, similar to Dalton Kincaid with Dawson Knox out. They are running three wide receiver sets really, really heavily, and he is the third wide receiver. So he's clipped 70% of the snaps now. That is a season high four for 57. So you're talking about back-to-back -back weeks where he was, you know, very involved in the offense. And I think that can be the case moving forward. They played Denver, the Jets, Philly, by Casey, Dallas, Chargers, New England. So I like Shakir and he would probably be one of my top ranked wide receiver pickups of the week. Jahan Dotson, 68% owned. Quentin Johnson, 52% owned. Demero Douglas was a guy that we really, really liked on the waiver wire last week. And he goes five for 55 which is what you're going to see pretty much every week, right? Like four for 54, two for 45, five for 55. That's what he's going to do. He's going to be a PPR guy. I don't know how much upside he really has in terms of scoring, but they do have a great schedule. They play Indy next week, who have allowed the single most points per game as a defense. They play the Giants after the bye, the Chargers, Pittsburgh, KC, Denver, but like no defenses that really scare you in terms of like Mac Jones not being able to throw the ball competently. And Demario Douglas is probably the number one with Kendrick Bourne out. So Demario Douglas, like low key is probably my... I think he straight up might be my wide receiver one on the free agency pickups this week if he's available, just because again, there just lacks any sort of like upside or real fun. You know, we're not we're not out here really having fun at all this week. Tight ends, Taysom, I unbelievable that he's only fifty eight percent owned. Kate Otten would be the natural fit in this week. So Kate Otten's been a dude who's really involved in this offense at, at the moment, at least, right? I'm I'm in a league where this league actually, the NYC Bash weekend. I have Dallas Goddard, and I'm probably going to have to go and grab a dude like Kate Otten, who has been running basically every route for this team. If you look at the snap percentages, look at this, 97, 97, 91, 100, 96, 96, 97, 100. He finally had like his breakout game, six for 70 and two touchdowns. They play the Tennessee passing defense, which is great. Indy, Carolina, Atlanta, like they have a lot of really, really pillow soft matchups going forward. Otten's gotten six targets in each of the last three games. I, I wouldn't be surprised if we're due. We're definitely due for like a one for 20 fucking game out of Otten, but he's probably my favorite realistic waiver wire pickup 
on the trending tab. Johnu Smith somehow is still only rostered in 31% of leagues. If you're in a serious league, he's probably rostered. He's a top 10 tight end right now. Again, I'll say this for the 40th time in a row. He's not a gimmick. He's not a gimmick out there. Arthur Smith genuinely fucking loves Johnu Smith, especially in games when Drake London is going to be out. Johnu Smith is going to pop off. Like they draw up plays for this man. So Johnu, Johnu is definitely a priority ad if you need a tight end and he's available. Schultz is going to be really, really highly owned. Fergie baby, huge bounce back. He's been getting ri- this. This passing offense is going super heavy. Dak has been super accurate and it's running through CD and Jake Ferguson, which you love to see, but he's also extremely highly owned. I don't hate Gerald Everett even coming off a really bad game last night. Like without Mike Williams and without Josh Palmer going forward, there are going to be other receivers besides Keenan Allen that have big games. Of course, they played the Jets, which is just a tough pass defense in general. But going forward, Detroit, that's a great matchup for tight ends. Green Bay is not a scary defense. Baltimore is. New England's kind of tough. But like Vegas, Buffalo, and Denver in the fantasy playoffs, great matchups. Moving over to the trending down tab, um, I'd still hold on to Levis. Tampa Bay has a great great match is a great matchup for fantasy quarterbacks Darrell Henderson listen I think so I think Kyron Williams still has to miss one more game after the bye so they have a bye week this week then they miss one more game with Kyron Williams so I do believe Stafford should be back after the bye hypothetically which means they'll have a split of Royce Freeman and Darrell Henderson so if you have the luxury of holding on to one of those two guys and needing to play him the week after the bye I don't think it's a terrible idea Osborne I would hold on to he got concussed, but he's been really, really involved in the offense when he is on the field. Trey McBride, I would absolutely hold on to. Royce Freeman, same sentiment. Uh, Roshan is droppable for me. Goddard, I expect to be put on the IR. Um, if not, like you, you're going to want to try to hold on to him. We'll see. Logan Thomas, I don't think should be dropped either. He's been pretty much as steady as they come at the tight end position for dudes that are not like highly, highly elite producers 41 77 yeah i'll have the down this is the week that i was like yeah logan thomas is a must start of course that's the fucking one week i said that 51 44 33 so 30 51 44 31 like you could do worse than than logue still josh downs were definitely not dropping quentin johnson i would still hold on to for another week or two you can't start him but i'd hold on jeff wilson uh i mean they got the buy and then hn is back i am completely fine dropping him Brandon Cooks is kind of a curious case. He's really been doing nothing for fantasy. He did have back-to-back nice weeks. I will say, though, he's still very involved in the offense. 80, 70, 65, 78, 62, 77. He's playing 75 to 80% of snaps pretty much weekly, whereas Michael Gallup's snaps have dropped off. Oh, one other name I do want to mention, Jalen Tolbert. Jalen Tolbert was a dude I loved coming out of college. I thought he was like a, almost like a Walmart version of Adam Thielen, where he's not amazing at anything, but he's very, very good all around, well-rounded. And a lot of times you see these guys come out of smaller schools like Jalen Tolbert, and it takes them a minute to acclimate to the NFL. And he's the guy that's causing Michael Gallup's snap counts to decline. Tolbert looked good. We saw it on the primetime game, or it wasn't even a primetime game, I guess, but it felt like it was. Uh, Tolbert's a dude in deeper leagues that I would absolutely keep an eye on, and I'd probably rather own him just for the upside over Cook's rest of season. Deonta Foreman, I would definitely hold on to. He's still clearly like the one there. He's coming off a 20-carry game, and they get Carolina next week. Yes, Kula Herbert should be back. But, like, I think Foreman has carved out a role. I talked about Everett. Hold on to Fournette. I mean, 84%, 82%. Justice Hill, he's not someone I'm dying to hold on to. Mm, that about wraps up the trending tab for this week. So we will wrap it up there. Hopefully next week's a little bit more excited. But we're getting towards the playoffs, man. We're getting towards the playoffs. Now's the time that we got to start to think ahead right tomorrow's video will be a trade target video but trade deadlines are coming to a rapid halt very soon i think most standard leagues will have their trade deadlines stop in like week 12 maybe so after that we will try to do an episode that focuses specifically on playoff matchups fantasy playoff matchups and maybe do the last trade target video before the trade deadlines strictly focusing on the players with the best and worst fantasy playoff matchups we'll check that out all right, so make sure you're subscribed because we've got the trade target video coming out tomorrow. Make sure you head over to bdge.co for our waiver wire rankings, our weekly rankings, our private cum assault live stream every Saturday where I'm answering any and all of y'all sit start questions. Hit the button that looks like this if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see y'all tomorrow. Let's go.